What's going on, everybody? My name's Tyler. This is Sean with Rendered Reality. Thanks for joining us on Coffee and VR, coming at you right now. Happy Saturday, everybody. We are super excited to be here. Tyler's feeling a little bit rough this morning. Got to get some uh, extra caffeine in here really come on, quick. <laughs> but, come, on, uh, come on, you got to call me out. So, I know, I someone's got to drive this struggle bus. Man, That's I'm true. Telling you. That's what he sent me this morning, struggle bus. But uh, we all uh, honestly have some pretty exciting stuff, I feel like, to talk about today. Uh, some pretty cool stuff that at least I am excited about, uh, excited to get into. You, come on, man. You know how excited I've been to talk about the links and stuff. Uh, I know. Ever. I still always go back to this every time when we, I want to We've been following the link stuff for a long time we've talked about it a couple different times on the show uh but some of that uh this week as well some pretty big games that got released and i don't know why everybody's talking about a beard in the comments here i don't know i don't know what's going what on beard? what beard Flew Grogu said omg oh, beard alert or this. lack of <laughs> unsubscribe there you go See, exactly oh, oh the beard gosh, is gone unsubscribe. <laughs> who is that no that's honestly so i didn't even notice because i'm like bro that shirt i love that shirt and he's like what do you mean and I'm, you know it's like you didn't notice and i'm like yeah the shirt's awesome man like <laughs> <laughs> t-dub said who is the youth <laughs> that's what uh all week along this week that's what i've been getting all week is like who's this middle school kid <laughs> like everybody says how much younger i look it's ridiculous but yeah, i mean it's what it is it was time to go it was hot it's like 90 some degrees it feels so good feeling the breeze on my face and not having a beard blocking it. but it, it may make its return at some point the, the wife is pretty happy that it's gone she she uh she didn't mind it too long uh, for a while, but it was getting a little insane. And she I mean, November's like, coming up soon, man. No shave November's yeah. coming. So, But I, I made it a full year. I had this goal for a while that I always wanted at some point in my life to grow a year, which is a year long beard. And I successfully did that. I went from July to July and that was one year. So I was, I was ready for it to go though, but. But I kind of miss it a little yeah. bit. It's it's still weird when I wake up in the middle of the night and I see myself in the mirror and I'm like, what the heck? <laughs> like, I have that so extra strange. pillow down there. Yeah, you know? <laughs> yeah, it's, it's pretty crazy. It's pretty crazy. So, uh, so what have you been playing this week? <sighs> played Pop 1. We played Pop 1 together too. Um, we weren't doing too hot. Having we some had issues, some frustrations, sure. yeah, um, which we'll get into here in a second. I played Sniper Elite, obviously. Um, you know, and being gun guys and stuff like that, I was... We, we're definitely going to get into that. Interested? We're, we're definitely uh, going to get into surprise? some of the, yeah, Addy? some of the sniper elite. Yeah. Add? I don't know. I have some opinions on it for sure. Uh, <laughs> yeah. uh, where did that comment go? Somebody <laughs> said that the beard balance is out of whack and that you got to, uh, there you go. Uh, where did it go? Yeah. I can't find it now, but uh, yeah, they said you got to grow your beard. I shaved mine. It's time for you to grow yours. So. I know. I am. We'll see. Yeah. We'll see here. Uh, Chris 9989 yeah. said, Sean shaving his beard so Tyler can grow his. The beard balance in the universe must be maintained. <laughs> oh, this is bad. This is bad. It is bad. Look, it is if bad. I do, I'm definitely getting a mouse or a squirrel to live in there. That's, that's the <laughs> I think I'm I had a couple. Of, there's no, uh, yeah, right? but uh well, but uh, the, the issues that we were having to pop on seems to be some issues that they're having right now with uh, communications with uh, mics and stuff back and forth between yeah. players. Uh, me and Tyler were playing together. I don't know what night it was, like Wednesday or Thursday or something like that. Yeah, and, and Is it just a weird coincidence that the day that Facebook announced that they were buying big box or bought or purchased or whatever, whatever you want to call it, that we started having issues, server yeah, issues, server issues, stuff like that. And I'm like, did they really the day. upload everything onto like Facebook servers? I don't know. Um, and, and cause all these problems. I, I don't know. It might've just been a coincidence, but it was literally, yeah. Like to the day, wasn't it? Or the yeah, next day. It was. Yeah. It was um, literally, we talked about that. We made a joke about it when we were playing. Cause we were like, something right. has definitely feels different. You know what I mean? And it was like, uh, they've had server issues issues ever since that time i don't know if it's just a coincidence yeah. or if there's something going on there but we still love the game we still can't get enough oh, yeah. i mean it's it's a super addictive it was, it was crazy game. that we almost won that one with no comms between us yeah um 
we were just hiding out, like, dying, hiding out up on the tower and stuff. It, it is so possible, hard to play without yeah. being able to talk to your team. Really I mean, you is. can ping stuff in that, and that helps, but, man, it is tough. Yeah, it's definitely tough. But, yeah, other than that, I think that's all. I, oh, I played some more Gun Club a little bit. I keep dabbling in Gun Club. Um, I had a conversation with somebody last night, you know, about real guns. And it's funny because I always wind up referring back to VR, like in real life conversations for some reason, which I don't, is that everybody or just me? Like, I feel like I compare everything now to stuff I've done in VR, which yeah. it's usually the opposite way, but I don't know. I always <laughs> want to show everybody and tell everybody, yo, you want to see this gun? I can give it to you. I can hand it to you yeah. in VR. Like, you can, you can feel it, what it feels it like, like to shoot it. Well, kind right. of, but yeah. Oh, so, man. and I know Wolf Roz is a big fan of Gun Club too. I actually haven't played that one. I still need to yeah. pick that up. Uh, but yeah, so what, what you, do you want to get into play? first? Because we got a, we got a bunch play? of stuff to get into. What's that? What'd you play? What did I play? So I played yeah. Sniper Elite, one. obviously Sniper. Population yep. 1. Uh, I played the baseball. What's the baseball game that just came out? Uh, the, oh, the, um, totally baseball. Yeah. Totally baseball. Yeah. Uh, I played some of that. What else did I play? I don't remember. I think those were the main things that I played this week, a decent amount of uh, Sniper Elite. The bad thing is it is cross-buy, but it doesn't save oh. your uh, progress between the PC build and the Quest build. Which is which, weird, because they have cloud saves. Yeah, so why and I guess that's just that? saving mm-hmm. your progress when you go back in. I was a little bit bummed about that, because I played for a little while on the PC, and then I played for a little while on the Quest, and I was hoping I could right. just jump in on the Quest and pick up where I left off, but uh, it, it didn't do that. So, And I wanted to compare it, because, you know, seeing the PC build and the Quest build, right but i definitely wanted to see how it compared but yeah. that, those are the main things i played we can get into a little bit about uh totally baseball because i didn't want to talk yeah. about uh there's some sports stuff coming up there's some other stuff coming up that kind of relates and i kind of want to talk about that we talked a little bit about 2md football last week which is like the right. main staple of a football game in vr uh, and i think this could become the main staple of a baseball game in vr i, I feel like it's yeah, uh that's what uh, Beanzo said too in yeah it, it's pretty it's pretty good the problem the thing is is we're talking a little bit about this earlier is that sports games are a main staple in gaming you know you have right. like madden games and like all these uh nba games and you know baseball games and stuff in flat world and they really haven't caught on huge yet in vr like we haven't seen a ton of like, especially not that level of sports Sports right. games. And mainstream I think, big stuff right yeah i think the reason is is that it's not easy it's a very difficult genre to do in vr you know and even 2md you know they, they've done a very good job but it's mostly focused you know on offensive plays uh, and sure. stuff like that and and the, but but 2md started that way as well well 2md started very much i mean it was right. very basic and it has grown a Correct. ton you know they've, yep. they've learned and progressed and and this baseball game is pretty much a full baseball game you're playing you know, offense, defense, uh, you're running the bases and everything else. And, and as you can see right. in the video here, that's my footage. One of the issues I was having is that the tracking, it kept like, cause you put a bat behind your head, you know, you hold it like this to play baseball. And it mm-hmm. kept telling me to keep the bat in the, in the tracking area. Well, how are you supposed to do that? You know what I mean? Like right. you can't really, when you play baseball, unless you're holding it like this and just, I don't know, that was kind of weird, but, uh, it, it honestly, it's a lot of fun, but it takes some practice to get good at, it, especially for outfielding and catching the balls, because there's two ways to, to run. Uh, you can use stick locomotion or you can use your hands to run. And I was actually using the hands to run because I felt like that was a little bit more realistic feeling. Uh, and sometimes it just puts you in a weird location when the ball was coming. That's definitely going to take some practice. But I think the core mechanics that they have there are pretty good. I think it still needs a little bit of work. I think I still need some practice. Uh, the sure. throwing the ball when you're pitching is pretty difficult. But if you turn uh, the regular throwing on and you turn on the assist on high, that was what I seemed to have. Uh, the most luck with and stuff uh, without the assist i was throwing the ball like all over the place and they also have like a little hand rocket thing that you can use and be really accurate with your throwing but that just didn't feel as good to me but well, i think a lot i think a lot of sports games are needed i do yeah i think you're right though it needs to be done right i mean that's that's kind of the problem um but yeah i don't know i mean it's it's a good thing we need them i mean everyone you know sports scramble uh 2md those are really the only I don't know, I guess decent ones, yeah, there's all the good ones, ones that sports. we have. I mean, they but, all do a right. pretty good job, but most of the sports games that we have yeah. aren't a full-blown sports game, like a right. sports simulator, you know, where you're right. doing everything you can do in a real That's game true. because it's hard. That's you know, true. the locomotion is kind of hard. And I think this yeah. game might actually be easier if I turn it on the stick locomotion. But a lot of times, like even when I was batting, like after I would swing or hit the ball, it would kept turning me like 90 degrees. And I was like, what is going on? I don't know if that was something <laughs> I was doing wrong or something. And then the one time I thought this was a home run. I was like, oh, sweet, a home run. 
one. And I'm just standing there. And then I'm like, oh, crap, it's not a home run. I got to run. But again, it flicked me 90 degrees and I started running towards third base. And I was like, sure. why did it do So I don't know if that was something I did wrong or what. But uh, this yeah. was the first time I had ever played it in this video. I was recording the footage. So it's pretty cool. It is getting a multiplayer update, which really fascinates me because... To me, that will add to the game quite a bit when you can face somebody else. The thing I don't know is I'm guessing it's going to be like a 1v1 kind of a multiplayer, and I don't know for sure, but I think it would be cool to be able to get like a whole team. You know what I mean? Get your whole team oh, yeah. and be like, yo, bring your team and let's throw down in some baseball. But I have a well, feeling it's going to be one-on-one -on -one offense, defense. I, that's very tough because, again, with all those multiplayers, fast-moving balls, the server references, it all has to be timed balls. up perfectly. That's very hard to do. <laughs> that is true. So, what did you say? Tyrell, Tyrell Wood in chat said the best sports game is Echo Arena, which that is go. a killer sports game, and I suck yeah. at it. I'm terrible, <laughs> so I don't play it very often. My nephews play that game all the time, though, and they they're really good at it. So yeah, uh, I know. I mean, it is it's it is a sports game. Yeah. True. I, I mean, mean, it's, it's kind of like futuristic football, sports game. Almost. Yeah. I mean, it's almost like a football right. game in a sense. I mean, you have Frisbee you know ball, your your goal whatever. on one end or the other that you're right. trying to get the disc to or disc. Sure. Yeah. I, I don't know. A combination yeah. of a bunch of different sports, but yeah, that is. But that's like its own genre. You know what I mean? That's not based off of a real world sport. It's funny. Like se, to me, but... I though I feel like a lot of VR games are, you know, anything active to me, I guess, is sport. So like even if we're playing Mill Sims and stuff, yeah. I literally am down on my knees, ducking, moving, jumping. Yeah, for sure. I mean, I get exhausted playing pistol whip. Like to me, I guess, and I know it's not sports in the genre of, you know, having a ball and a team and stuff, but I mean, I guess it is, right? I mean, you still have teams in a lot of things and a lot of multiplayer things. Yeah, I mean, things. It's, to me, I it's sports. Know. I mean, esports like, is a thing, and that's right, all that's kinds of different point. games. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So yeah. I feel like anything active or competitive to me is a sport. Yeah. So, so and there, I, I mean, there's other things, too, like uh, Mind Jab saying, Elvin, uh, table the tennis, bowling. premium bowling, Matty Matt says. Yeah, and those are those right. are good sports games. Those putt, games putt, are a little bit a easier <laughs> translated into VR, though, than I think like a baseball, sure. a football, a basketball kind of game you know right. those games are just a lot harder and and no. you gotta you know those games the physics are easier too because even like in baseball yep. when you're throwing the baseball it, there's a big disconnect between throwing a baseball in vr and throwing a baseball in the real world you know you can you can feel when that ball leaves your hand and have a sense of how much pressure you're giving control, it you know you control yes, aim they, where vr is a total different animal right. when it comes to that bowling, and some bowling i can feel that too i like to yeah. spin the ball a little when i actually bowl but yeah. on there you know it's, you're feeling the air instead of a ball yeah. so it is a little different yeah. there's definitely a disconnect and i think that some games do it better than others as far as the way the ball leaves your hand and everything else sure. so uh, i think the assist is pretty good in this one if you want to throw it regular i definitely like the regular throwing rather than the little hand cannon thing but yeah, it's a pretty cool game, though. I, I definitely yeah. think, I mean, I think it's fourteen ninety nine. I think especially once they get the multiplayer out there, I think yeah, that probably. is maybe where this thing's going to shine. Uh, I just like the running. More. The running's awesome. Yeah, I definitely need some practice. <laughs> I'm going to get my butt kicked if I try to play it right now. The, <laughs> the outfielding is, is definitely kind of difficult, yeah. but just to get That's to awesome. where you need to get to to catch the ball. But I think the I think the stick locomotion might be what I need to do, too. Might help yep. out a little bit. But uh, in chat. Here's man. Yeah. Oh, we got a uh, actually. Yeah. In the description, there's a, a mm -hmm. giveaway. One of the giveaways we have going on is for the memory engine, which he wrote, which is oh. a, a fantastic book. One of my favorite books. And it's a signed copy. So right. uh, definitely sign up for that Gleam awesome. giveaway. Yeah. We'll probably throw in some extra RR stickers and pins and stuff like that, too. When we ship it out. So make sure you sign up for that. But yep. Cheers, and, man. And it's available awesome. on Amazon, too. Uh, the yep. hard copy book and the uh, audio book. Yeah. So yep. great book. Great book. Yep. Uh, awesome. Talking about talking about some of the sports stuff, there's another one that's coming up on Quest. This is uh, coming soon. This is called Player 22. And, and this isn't necessarily a sports simulator. This is meant to be a, a training trainer. aid, right? Yeah. 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 And I don't know, man. Like, to me, I feel like if you're trying to... I don't feel like you... I don't know. It'd be hard to recreate training in VR for something that is very physical. I get it for the timing stuff. Timing, you know, you yeah. and I talked about timing. I, I totally get that. And they kind of have to go that route. Um, and yeah, you made a good point with the wife, which I know, I, I just, I don't know. I don't know how well it would be received on the outside then as progression. And I get it. Timing can always help. I mean, look at the people who, 
you know, played Guitar Hero back in the day. I mean, you know, at first it was you couldn't even hit the buttons. And by the end, yeah. you know, somebody on Expert or, you know, Beat Saber, same principle, you know, hard in the beginning. And then you're freaking slicing stuff that you can't even see. So it does improve timing and stuff. But then does it translate to the outside? I guess they're saying, yes, it does. Yeah, they're, I mean, they're saying and they're, the, you said uh, mentioned about what my wife said. And uh, we used to play a lot of box VR. We don't play it as much anymore, but we used to play that together like all the time. And my wife is usually always had some not awesome hand eye coordination. That was not where she, you know, she wasn't very high on the hand eye coordination. And sure. after playing a lot of box VR, her real life hand eye coordination was like 10 times better. And like, I, I could tell too, you know, just playing backyard games and stuff with her, I could tell a big difference in her right. hand eye coordination after playing a lot of box VR. Like it definitely did help in that aspect. And I think that is probably more of what the focus is somewhat here, but these are all just mini games that are like, it, you know, I, right. Yeah. I don't know. I know. <laughs> I don't know. To say that this is something that you would like make your players do for training and stuff. Yeah. I don't really feel like it's that much of a simulation. I mean, come on. I played soccer. If I'm going to freaking head a ball, it's not going to be like this. Like, yeah, that's me. I yeah, don't know. Right, right. And and so what they're saying is that, you know, obviously features a number of different mini games aimed at improving your reaction and accuracy, uh, tracks right. your progress. And the developers say that the platform has been tested by elite sportsmen and women, coaches, and teams. So okay, what tested that by, means but doesn't mean exactly. It's approved. Yeah, it's like right, right. Four so, out of five doctors approve this crap, and the fifth one's <laughs> under a bus. Like, I don't. Yeah, we'll see. I mean, this yeah. is so this is a follow up to Player 21, I guess, which I never even paid any attention to. It was on a Steam. That was like a Steam only thing on. Uh, called player 21 this is player 22 coming to the quest platform but i mean sure. i guess we'll see i mean yeah. uh, maybe some fitness people let us know after you play this and see if it really sure improves some things for you but it's too many other fitness apps though man yeah but it's i feel crazy. like you could play beat saber or box vr right. or and you get the table same tennis exactly. yeah get the same exactly. kind of things out of this i would and agree maybe have That's more fun point. doing it i don't know yeah. right True. Meh. Yeah, you never know. Yeah. I mean, some people are just that into sports, too. Yeah, I mean, that's true. Ar Arthur Knox said, I mean, yeah. uh, thank you for that super chat, too. I missed yeah, that. He said, this yeah, is why VR that. gloves and haptic feedback is so important. Which, yeah, I agree. That'll definitely add right. to the experience the for sure. Yeah. Like, I mean, it, it's going to yeah, add I mean, to... You actually grab a ball and it stops your hand yeah. at that ball. Or even having, you know, d doing the head thing for the soccer. You know I mean? The soccer ball hitting and you getting the true. feedback on your forehead. Just the timing with that and stuff could... Uh, Good yeah. quite a bit. And I'm actually going, I think I'm going to order the B haptics X 40. We talked about it a little bit. I haven't done it yet. I, uh, I went into, uh, Oh crap. Now I can't think of the name. What is the name of that? Uh, Neos Neos VR. I went into the yeah, yeah. B haptics event last weekend, right. uh, with a bunch of people cast was in there. Uh, Skiba, Alex, lonely Viper. I mean like all kinds of people were in there and it was actually a ton of fun. It was all set up to give feedback to the B haptics vest. There was all these different things that would happen in there. My first time in Neos, I did upload my Ready Player Me avatar, which everybody said looked a lot like me, and they, they recognized me like right away walking up because they probably wouldn't recognize sure. my gamer tag, but that, that was pretty cool. It was actually a really awesome experience, and Neos VR is definitely, I think, the future a little bit and headed towards that Ready Player One thing. It still needs a lot of optimizations. It's very CPU heavy right sure. now. You know, I was running like 20 frames a second with all those people in there, Ooh. and it, it was... Yeah, it needs yeah. some work, but the the Ouch. amount of stuff you can do in there though is pretty right. amazing. I mean, like right. limitless, literally. So and that's what they're going for, and yeah. that's awesome because that's huge. Everyone wants to customize everything from their headset to themselves yeah. in VR. I mean, that's the yeah. world we live in. So. I mean, you can literally yeah, stash great. things in your inventory, take them into different worlds with you. At one point in time, I believe it was Lonely Viper pulled out a Pokeball and captured Robin's reality in the Pokeball, and you could look at it and see her in there, and then you'd open sure. it up and she'd come back out. And I mean, it was just some really cool stuff so it kind of opened my eyes a little bit to neos and i, and I do look forward to getting back in yeah. there with some friends it was it was fun so yep. but uh yeah. yeah i think i am i might hoard that b hat to say it was in my cart i was asking people a couple questions and i didn't hit the uh purchase yet but i think i i think i am going to but told you just do it yeah i probably will come on man i did it with the yaw i mean it, it's, it's how it goes man yeah. for science i mean come for on science. For science, exactly. check it out. Right. Um, so, yeah, uh, I did want to mention. So, German Rifter actually sent us some codes to give away. So, oh, so yeah. this is we got a he get sent like eight codes. So, this is paper jams. Well, we'll have two more of these. This is on Steam. Uh, this is a Steam code, and I just wanted to mention he he bought these with his own money. He sent these to us to to give away, and he just wanted to support indie developers. You know, he he loves yeah. to support indie developers. He met, wanted to make That's sure we, we mentioned that. We are. Yep. yep. And the 
fact that this is from Psycho Parrot. His name is Jeff, the, the developer of these games. So Paper Jams, he also, we talked about RC. What was the RC one? With RC Rush. Rush. Last week, yep. uh, last weekend we talked yep. about RC Rush. He is the developer of that as well coming up. So That's he just awesome. wanted to kind of shout out this developer, uh, indie developer, give away some of his games, which is really, really cool. So definitely uh, thank yeah, you for is. that. So yeah. uh, hopefully somebody got those two codes. I'm going to throw up the other two codes for Paper Jams right here. And then we'll later we'll give away some Axe Throw uh, Steam codes that are from German Rifter as well. So awesome, awesome guy. He's a staple in the VR community. We love that guy. He, he's I a really want to play so. RC Rush. You know what would be super cool, though, is I have a remote, an actual RC mm-hmm. remote that you can plug in to the PC for training that purposes. Would be sweet. Oh, that would be so I good. I think it it's needs not, to be. I mean, it's I, not I think an it needs actual to, car one, though. So yeah, we talked a little bit about some of that stuff in the Discord. And I think that it really needs to be uh, a combination of that kind of controller with hand tracking. Mm-hmm. Like, how cool would it be if you're driving the RC car around with that controller, and then you want to reach pick it out up with your hands? Yeah, pick it up, it move over, it somewhere else right. on the track, flip yeah, it over. Yeah, like, yeah. man, that that stuff. Oh man, that yeah. stuff gets really cool. That would so. be cool. I know. <laughs> Rizzle Rock. Rizzle. Thank you for that Cheers. super chat. He said, "Sean's beard relief fund." <laughs> <laughs> oh man the beard the beard, beard stuff yeah. is gonna be it's gonna be weird for a while like I, I feel like it just looks weird now but so i have a question did you actually bury it and like create a memorial for it and everything yeah i buried what? it hoping it would grow still i don't want it to stop growing no i actually cut it off in the backyard i got clippers and extension cord and went in the backyard because i didn't want to cut it in the house and have to clean it all up that didn't sound very fun no, so yeah no <laughs> in the duck work and everything oh man asking. yeah it'd be crazy so <laughs> arthur knox with another five dollar super chat so oh, when we'll be able when w- so when we be able to the avatar we create to other people's vr rooms to watch or play games so uh, i don't know you could the neos vr is actually there's a ton of stuff you can do and you could yeah. actually probably do that as well. If somebody created a room where they are streaming a game and stuff like that, they can set sure. up a chairs and stuff and an audience in there. I mean, it, literally Neos VR is pretty much limitless of what it seems like right now. There's a lot to learn in there. It's still, like I said, it still needs some uh, optimizations for sure. But I mean, you can kind of do that in some things already, yeah. like alt space, uh, big screen. I mean, yeah, you're not having like, true, you know, you're not having true avatars really in there, yeah. you know, but I but mean, in Neos, you can create the avatars I mean, are pretty limited. I mean, cause you can directly import your ready player me. You can make your own avatars from right. scratch, any 3d model. It seems like, uh, you can upload that file into the game and, it, and it's pretty cool. So yeah. <laughs> Paradise the decay. Idea of bearing it. He said, awesome. I saw your beard. It's on holiday in Disneyland. <laughs> Is that where it went? I wonder. <laughs> That's awesome. <laughs> I think it's going to Ibiza next, man. Oh man. <laughs> oh robin's reality is in here now she said omg your beard and neo stock right? <laughs> so, yeah. i might have to change my ready player me avatar now in uh neo although they didn't have a right. full life-size beard of how big it actually was so it That's might somebody. still be okay but yeah we'll see yeah exactly. it looks it looks weird i still can't look at myself oh, i gosh. look strange i look strange but... oh so can we talk about some smell vision oh jeez <laughs> Oh, geez, not this. I, I, this is a conversation I never thought was get, we were going to have to have again, honestly. I know. I, I would agree. I would totally agree. Um, and I really don't feel like we have a need for one. But, you know, mm. they've been working on this for a while now. And I just really need to know if this is going to be approved or denied yeah, again. Because this is uh, almost the same thing as like Feel Real. If you remember the Feel right. Real module that snapped onto your quest or whatever yeah. was, had sense. It didn't and, get approved. Yeah, they, they pushed that thing for a while. They talked about it for a long time and didn't get it. It basically got shut down by the FDA, if I remember correct, because right. you're, you're spraying chemicals directly into your nose and they they didn't approve that. So this is essentially the same kind of thing, but we I can't find the information to say exactly what they're using. It seemed like the feel real, if I remember sense. right, was using yeah. like vape stuff, like the stuff from vapor pens or right. whatever they are, right. uh, that kind of stuff. So if this is maybe something completely different that we are, are unaware of at this point, but I know. Uh, like if they do it naturally, is that going to be approved? I, I don't know. I, I think it would be incredible because smells are awesome. I mean, it's another scent in yeah. VR, just like the haptic feedbacks. It gives you the same feeling or yeah, um, you just feeling sounds yeah. behind you. All that stuff is so like sensory everyone you add is better the motion rigs exactly that was my next one the gunpowder yeah so this is a candle that's supposed to smell like gunpowder and i totally burned this while playing uh like contractors you know shooter games and unfortunately it doesn't really smell like gunpowder a lot right it smells more like a soapy 
I don't know. It's hard to explain. It, like it, a lotion thing? Yeah, and these things weren't cheap either, but it was. It totally doesn't smell enough like gunpowder because gunpowder has a very distinct smell. But if you were in that kind of an immersive environment playing a gun game and you can smell the smell of gunpowder, you know, that, you, yeah, that is said, a powerful explosions, thing. Explosions, gasoline, yeah. like yeah. smelling all that stuff. Race like, gas when you're driving, doing a sim right. racer. Like it's a Tires. powerful, I know. yeah, burnt I know. rubber. It's a, it's a powerful thing, but is it something that is going to be possible to recreate all these different right. smells, do it safely where you're not inhaling some crazy. And they have the capsules on the side there. You can see the nine different yep. ones and stuff. Yeah, but nine cents again, interchangeable I cartridges. Just, so they're I saying know. I don't know if it's worth it. What what they're saying about this is that it's the most accurate and precise uh mass scent device available. The architecture of scent framework translates VR movements and inputs into real time scent output. Uh, they're saying their patented technology allows for 0.1 millisecond bursts of scent and can change between scents in 20 milliseconds. Uh, this is called the ion uh, it says it's controlled via Wi-Fi or USB and it easily adapts to most major HMDs. Yeah, I, I think it's awesome. I would love to try it again. I don't think it's something I would use nonstop though, because then you're running out of capsules and having yeah. to buy new ones and do all yeah. that. And, and this is the other problem. Just like reckon VR says the smells never seem to smell like the thing they're supposed to just like this candle. True. It doesn't really smell like gunpowder. Uh, so True. it doesn't smell enough like gunpowder for me to make that connection when I'm, when I'm in VR, but supposedly their, their big thing with this company is capturing the sense. They have this way of capturing sense that they're supposedly translating it into reproducing it that is amazing so i don't know i yeah it'd be interesting to try but yeah i don't know yeah I, I don't know i mean i think the location. idea of scent in vr is an awesome you know just triggering another one of those senses and they're they, they were talking about using this more for like uh uh like counseling therapy kind of thing. therapy kind and, of stuff yeah. yeah exploring things or experiences stuff like, like that things that it would is, trigger yeah. past things and yep. stuff i i don't know but i know interesting to say the least i i don't know i have a feeling it's going to be another feel real <laughs> thing that's right. not ever really going to hit the market uh getting that kind of stuff yep. approved is just not very easy you know yeah. I, or I being know. just enterprise i mean ultimately just being enterprise too not even yeah. going to be consumer so but yeah, yeah that is the OVR. oh their t-dub said playing resident evil 7 i got some nasty smells i never wanted to experience didn't i'm pretty sure they made a candle actually uh for resident oh, evil 7 yeah. they made a like right. disgusting smelling candle if i remember right i never got it but i kind of want yeah. one now but didn't, they, didn't somebody make one that was supposed to like burn in waves too and change yeah because we've talked about this whole some, smell thing the candle though, too, that that. Yeah, yeah we talked about this candle stuff a ways back back in the past that was when i originally got this and we started talking about it. i was like man i gotta try this but i just <laughs> if somebody knows of some stuff that actually because they are there are candles uh that do race fuel that do burned rubber do yeah, all that kind of stuff this is good those this is cool. the only one i've tried so i don't know yeah. if those like how if those smell more like it but uh <laughs> read what read, it only smells like weed know. smoke when i play vr oh jeez. <laughs> that's sorry. awesome but yeah i mean it is it's it's it could be potentially future stuff i don't know they just got to figure out a way yeah. to do it safely naturally you know get it past fda and all that stuff so it, yeah. it, someday down the road yeah you never yeah. know so yeah. let's talk a little bit about sniper elite because this right. is the big big i think release uh one of the bigger releases this year, probably. I mean, we sure. people have been excited about sure this game for a very, very long time. They have been working yep. on this game for a very, very long time. And this is a well-known franchise, a well-known name from the flat world, you know, a sniper elite game. So this is this is pretty huge in the world of right. VR, what this could, could potentially mean. I, I'm going to go in saying my pre-thoughts to this, and I voiced them to you very strongly before, yeah. is that I felt like it was going to be an arcade shooter. And that's what... I thought, I think it is close to that. I think it's done better than I probably expected, but it's still not what I would expect out of a game that's main focus is shooting. I think yeah. the mechanics to me are not fluid enough to feel like it's a great shooter. I think it's accessible for a lot of people, mm -hmm. and that's probably the spot that they wanted to be at. For me, because we play a lot of shooters from pop one to, you know, contractors, those are our go to shooters nowadays. I, I compare everything to that and yeah. it's not up to that standard. Well, even I mean, but I don't think it needs to be. 
Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. I mean, I it is kind it of an arcade shooter for sure. And I mean, the standards, I mean, if you compare it to, cause even population one, that's an arcade shooter, you know, but comparing it to something like Pavlov yeah. contractors onward, you know, th- those guns, the guns in those games feel better than the guns in the game of sniper elite. The snipers feel oh, yeah. pretty good to me. The snipers feel decent, you know, but uh, there's still some gripes and we'll get into that. But the yeah. rest of the guns, the pistol, the other guns are like completely pointless. They don't feel good at all. The pistol literally feels like a little pew pew water squirt gun. Like it feels right. terrible. It's the worst feeling pistol I've probably ever felt in VR, which I don't understand. Like I know their focus is snipers and the snipers right. I think feel pretty good, but I think the rest of the guns are definitely oh, okay. lacking. right there. The, the grip thing too kills me. I, and then it breaks like here. You're probably, I don't know, it doesn't show it because you missed. <laughs> but I missed. It's uh, w- when you shoot somebody and it has the kill cam, I'd always find right. myself coming back, which is awesome to watch. But then I'd always let go of the grip because I feel like I I'm too. in the middle of a scene and then yep. I'd come back and my gun would be on the floor. That was the oh thing God, I did crap. almost every time the first time I played it. So this is actually the second time I played it because this is going back. This is quest footage. This is going back and playing it on the quest. Uh, and it the kill cam is, I think, the highlight of the game. Like, that's what everybody is At like. First. Oh, this kill cam is amazing. And it is really cool the kill cam to see. Right. It also gets kind of old, but luckily you can turn the frequency down you can turn it yeah. off so i'm very glad that they gave us those options because without that i would be right. extremely annoyed uh right. one of no, i agree one of my biggest gripes other than the guns and we'll get back a little bit into the guns but is the interaction with the environment like there's nothing in the I environment know. that's interactive doors are literally reach out and click things and you are do, you put your hand in them and just pull like a, a grip button yeah and it's like it's a trigger. just it's weird for a game in 2021 that is this high level i expected more than that i expected more interactivity even the picking things up like they did the whole half-life alex gravity glove in half-life alex the gravity glove fits the narrative of the story you know what i mean it feels good yeah and it feels good the game is built around this is a world war ii game that doesn't make sense you're not wearing a gravity glove it just works that you and i understand it's more easily accessible to people you know you don't have to reach down bend down anything else but the bad thing is is if you want to just reach out and pick stuff up it doesn't feel normal. It doesn't feel right. It feels better to snap into your hand, even though that doesn't always work right. But the, and you always have the little circle indicators on everything that you can pick up. Like that is immersion breaking to me. Don't put that on it. Just let me reach out and grab it if I want to, or the gravity. Yeah, it does not. Here's the other, here's the other gripe I have. I ran through this without a care in the world. I had no fear of anything. And in a game when you're getting shot at and there's gunfire and stuff, I really felt no need to like hide or duck behind anything. I felt like I could walk through this and get shot and stand up and just shoot yeah. at them, even if they were shooting at me. Well, I mean, like, there's no differentiation between the enemy models. They're all pretty much the same right, thing, as right. well as the guns. All the snipers. Uh, no, there are some differences. In, I mean, uh, visually differences. They're wearing some different clothes, mm-hmm. but they all right. basically oh, you give like, you the same amount of threat level and stuff. You know what I mean? And right, and the guns yeah. themselves, you know, between the snipers, I think there's what five of them or something like that they all pretty much feel exactly the same the scope is a little bit different and tilted on one of them but they all feel the same i think one gun holds one more round of ammo and the other thing is is like if you saw previously if somebody's ducked undercover most of the time you can put it directly on their head because you can still see their head but it doesn't count as a hit it hits like the wall instead of hitting them just because they're ducked but you can still see their head which doesn't make any sense to me but I don't know. I, I know. I'm, I'm, I, you know, I went into it with, I think, such low expectations, expecting yeah. exactly this or probably worse, that I did enjoy it. But then, like, the story, I felt like it started off and I didn't really understand the story. Like, and they did the whole, you know, throw you in to some action right away, then go back to the tutorial and stuff. Yeah. You know, I felt like Medal of Honor did that way better. And it it's felt kinda, more fluid and stuff, even though that yeah. game wasn't great, even in the you know beginning parts and controls and everything. I felt like it did it better, but I yeah, just, I, I don't know. I feel like it's a good game. I feel it like is it's a good, good playthrough. I like but, it. I mean, I like, like the game itself, and I think that it is an easily accessible game, especially for people that aren't hardcore shooter fans of VR. Like, we've played more shooter games in VR than probably anything else, and that's what we love. Right. So I think for us, it's a lot more easy to be critical because we know what good guns in VR feels right. like. 
these guns aren't the best feeling guns I've felt in VR. They're, they, they're just kind of clunky. And what I started yeah. doing was I would read, cause when you shoot a rifle, bolt action rifle, you hold on with your left hand and you reload it with your right hand. If you're right handed, you know what I mean? You don't reach back with your left hand as you're gripping yeah. it. So that, and luckily you can do that in this game. But the problem mm. is, is that the grip points are oh, odd. So you use they're grip horrible. button to do everything. So right. what happens is when I'm using my right hand to, to reload, I, I rack snaps. the bolt yeah. and right. then sometimes I go to grip again and it grabs the bolt again instead of grabbing the pistol what a lot of games do smgs yeah horrible what a lot of games do to get around that kind of a thing is they'll use trigger button to interact with the bolt racking the bolt and they'll use grip button to hold the gun and that differentiates you know makes it so you're not grabbing the wrong spot all the time that is something that is a little bit weird in this one uh but uh, yeah Uh, I don't know. I mean, I I, I do like the game and I, I enjoy playing it and I will continue to play it. But I think there's a lot of little things that are still basic in VR that they could have done better for being a shooter game that has been in the works for this long from a company that is is been around a long time. You the know ga- I mean? So the game I go back to and want to like think about and compare this to and I think is a way better buy and does all of this stuff better is Phantom Covert Ops. That game has better sniping, I feel like, than this game, which is a sniper game. Yeah. And I feel like it's way more, you know, exploring, even though it's on rails too, you know what I mean? Yeah. You get that freedom and more interaction with things than you even do in this. Yeah. So I just, uh, yeah, I, don't I don't know. I do I like it. And I think for the it, masses, just, and I think I like that it. is, exactly. that right. is more what it is focused at is the masses in VR and stuff. You know I mean? People getting into VR, not having a big experience with mm-hmm. shooters and stuff like that. That's where this focus is. And I think it does a good job. I mean, I think I do right. like the game, so I don't want to be like overly no, negative. That it seems like I hate it. I just, it. Right. I have a lot of little gripes and I wish the guns just felt better with, you know what I yeah. mean? I, I don't know. I don't know. Yeah, it, I know. PD said shame, shame you could not experience the uh, PSVR version with the aim controllers. I, I get I got it. a gun stock. But yeah. <laughs> uh, well, and I probably yeah, I I haven't used my gun because stock in this yet. Because then you don't have all but, the clunky controls, but then yeah. you still have like button presses for things and stuff. But yeah, I don't know. I like to reload I, the gun. I don't like to push a button to reload the gun. Right, so the aim I, controller I agree, is yeah. cool for some stuff. And even in the, the regular PC or Oculus build, you can turn off the manual reloads. But for me, right. I, that's what oh, I like yeah. about VR. No. I want to reach out, grab that bolt and have to rack it. The pressure being fired, trying to get the bolt, you know, get it reloaded and the bolt set back. All of that. Yep. Uh, we did miss a super chat real quick. I wanted to mention Arthur Knox, uh, another super chat. He said, I would love yeah, to create yeah. a game that have a werewolf character character and use the smell to track other characters in the story as a way to immerse you in the game. That cool. would be that'd be insane, like, actually. Like a Marco Polo kind of deal. You know what I mean? Like it smells more over here. Yeah. You know, like you hear something over there, you go that way kind of thing. That would be yeah. cool. That, yeah, would, really that cool. would be cool. Uh, so, um, uh, sorry, I just ahead. want to mention in the video where you saw here, I tried to grip the pistol with two hands and can't do it. When you go to grip with your other oh, hand, I know. I tried it that pulls too. the magazine Many out. Times. What? I know. Like, I can't there's grab no a pistol. Problem. Not that there's any recoil or anything with this pistol anyways, but right, right. still, ugh, drive me crazy. It does. I know for aiming purposes, I feel like I, I have to two-hand everything. I know. Yeah, and um, Tyrell said it's very hard to reload in Sniper Elite. Yeah, the reloads yeah, don't it is. feel very fluid. I don't, I don't know no, why. No, they don't. Not at all. But. So I, I want to bring this up because... I haven't even got to talk to him or you about it yet. Uh, but Jayhem said, Woody, um, how do you guys think all of these poor releases will affect possible future AAA VR development? I, I, w- I hope it affects it in a way they see that they need to polish this stuff. I really hope so. I just don't think. I think they all come from these flat gaming backgrounds and they think that their controls are superior without actually testing them. Yeah. And... Or they test them in house and they don't test them outside. Of, like, did these of, guys ever play Contractors? Did they ever play Pavlov? Like, did they? I, the, you know? Okay, the gun skin on this gun, I was just like in awe over how horrible it looked. Yeah. I could not stop looking at it, like how bad it looks. Like, it, it doesn't look and awesome. I just was playing, you know, Gun Club and stuff. So then I come into here and I'm like, this thing looks like a little toy pea shooter thing. Like, and it feels I, like I guess, it. Like, there's a way to does, make a gun feel powerful in VR. These guns don't feel powerful to me. They don't give me a sense of, wow, I just shot a sniper rifle. Like a sniper, you shoot a sniper rifle in real life, you know, that's that's a pretty beastly round. You know what I mean? Like it's, I don't know. So John Westra says the lack of authenticity with respect to actual weapons makes anyone who's actually been in the field nuts, which I agree. If you have, if you have experience with real weapons or or even really good weapons in VR, it's just, 
it, it, it's, it it's yeah, I don't know. Yeah. But like I said, I don't want to be completely negative. I do like the game, and I think new newer people into VR and people that Absolutely. aren't big into shooters, they're, they're going to be yep. blown away by this game, I think. And this but, is on the Quest, too. That, yeah. It well, really that's the other is thing. an awesome-looking game. Like, to look at it's, it and explore It's and a walk gorgeous around. game on the Quest, it actually. Is. It actually it looks probably better on the quest than it does the pc vr build to be honest with you it, it i mean you can clearly tell this game was geared towards oh, quest, quest build yeah. yeah i mean that's what it was geared towards it looks great but it really to me at least it didn't really look much different playing it on pc vr i could probably double blind right. study maybe not even be able to pick it apart i don't know it just I looks agree. it looks good on quest though i mean that's a good thing for quest I, users it looks great i know i would love to hear in chat like uh, what you guys think about like playing and i know some of you guys have kind of some say they like it though like yeah yeah, James Everybody said they like it. Yeah, James um, said reloading the sniper elite Mark, in sniper elite feels amazing for me. Mark says sniper elite sucks the big one. <sighs> so I mean, you've got it's very two split, totally. Yeah. Like I wonder why some people do like it and why some don't, and what their experience is. Maybe they're not shooters. Maybe they don't play stuff like you know contractors or onward. Yeah, um, I think that's a big thing. Like I know James I just too. recently picked really up do. pop one. I don't know how I've never played contractors Pavlov or anything like that with him. I don't know how much he plays those games. My guess would right. be those aren't his go-to games. So somebody that doesn't play a lot of VR shooters, I think this would feel pretty good to them. I think. Yeah, I do too. I do. And I like all the environment and stuff and the gun saves. And I think it's really interesting what they did. And I yeah. like some of that, but yeah. I just I, I, can't get into it like as an actual gun game. I like is, it as an arcade game. Reckoner makes a very good point. He says there's very little planning your approach for a long distance. It's more of a point to point gallery shooter, at least for the mm -hmm. first couple hours. And I agree. I mean, a sniping, the role of a sniper is not what it portrays in this game. You know, the role of a sniper yeah. is you're not in the heat of the battle you know you're not right up there in the mix you're a far ways off and usually a pretty well discreet location you know you're not you're wanting to take sniper shots and, and pull off shots without being detected and there is some detection in this game and stuff but it, you're a lot more up in the mix as being a sniper than what you would be in a i just and, and feel it is like arcade game they, so they could have done some epic stuff though with this right so we've seen games like i'm trying to think which one it was uh, it was a flat game. There were some some missions you had where you would snipe stuff, and you know you'd be shooting like through buildings and trying to hit stuff. And could you imagine in VR like having that actual like bullet kill cam and flying like through a building, through the the window the of a window. car and yeah. hitting somebody like some epic stuff like that? I thought okay, they're definitely gonna you know give us some cool stuff like that. And yeah, it's just not. It feels just like. Yeah, it's a wave a gallery shooter, like shooter almost, wave shooter. It yeah. is. I mean, I it know, is kind of. I and I haven't know. beat the game yet. Full disclosure, I've played it a couple hours either, yeah. on Quest and a couple hours on the PC build. So I'm yep. going to continue through the game uh, and play it. I know there's some things that happen later on. I don't want to spoil anything too much that are right, pretty cool, right, but right. it's yeah. I uh, I don't know. I mean, it, I feel uh, like no. it was a little bit of a missed opportunity. They did a great job on the game in some aspects. I think it's going to sell it well. It's going to be popular. Great. It's probably yep. going to be one of the top sellers because there's so many people hey. excited about this game. But at the same time, I think there's some missed opportunities and some things they could have done really, really at well. At least it had at least had locomotion. I mean, yeah, right. I was fear. You know what I mean? It's yeah, like, at least it wasn't all snap that, turn and yeah, right. teleport. Oh gosh, at least yeah. they got some of that stuff right. That. You know, give us yep. the options. That's good. Yep. Uh, Arthur Knox again. He said, if you could sure, create man. team from any VR team to make a game, who would you pull and why? He uh -huh. said, this is a community question. Right. So we and I and Sean have talked and Jay Ham and I have talked that we would love to work with people and form some type of things going on because we, there are some very talented people in the industry. They're yep. like, without a doubt, the industry has some great people in VR right now. Um, and yeah, I really wish that would you could have one group of like people that could make some unbelievable game, um, you know, or somebody that had the financial backing to do that. Yeah. Um, and, and gather those people together and pay for a project for a year yep. or two and to fund me, them. To oh, me, the man. biggest thing is get some indie developers involved that have been doing this stuff for a long time because they do. They a lot of this better than you know. AAA people that have never yes. built a VR yeah. game before. Get them involved. That's what you need to do. Wild Ox. Jason over there, the stuff that he's been doing, like I went into one of his worlds the one time I could see forever and ran beautifully on stuff. The LODs you could see throughout his yeah. whole map. And I'm like, 
dude, this is incredible. And he was, you know, describing of why he did what. And, you know, you're when you're blocking other, you know, buildings and stuff, you drop the LODs for performance. And I'm like, these are things that these developers should all be doing in VR because performance is huge. Multiplayer is huge. And these people know what they're doing. So, yeah. yes, I would love to form somebody. Is there anybody in the community? Uh, yeah, I mean, I could riddle off a list of people that are doing incredible things, but they're all working on their own stuff. So yeah, exactly. the problem but I is think, would be dropping their things to do something else. I don't you know? know. I think That's they need to team up more, though, especially these AAA developers that want to make oh, VR games that have built awesome yep. flat games. I really think they need to... Yep at least collaborate they don't have to buy out uh, an indie development team but they can collaborate with them they can they can run things past them get ideas from them you know what i mean like they can work together in some sense you know what i mean that's what i think needs to happen because that's even modders like grab the the, the lambda guys yeah yeah um i mean anton's incredible with his gun mechanics and stuff i mean Blair's map design is incredible and yeah, there's visually. so many, so many and indie, indie developers that are just phenomenal Jason when it comes to VR. Performance from Wild Ox, like that list is could be crazy. Uh, it's really it's a yeah. Star Blazer guys. I mean, there's people that innovate and push things, and that's why we are where we are. And other indie developers are doing it better than you know Sniper yeah. Elite. I so totally it's like, agree. So, but I again, I love the game. I can't wait to play it some right, more. Right, it is right. a game that I enjoy. There's just a lot of gripes that I have about it that I think are missed opportunities, things they could have done better, especially for right. a, a gun game. I didn't want to talk. Well, let me run through my notes, make sure I didn't miss anything else. Cause there was a lot of points I wanted to make. I, I made a little note thing. Uh, oh, one of the things that I was kind of surprised about that there was no gun smoothing option. So, you know, if you got kind of shaky hands and stuff, right. I would like, you know, gunsmoothing options in games are pretty nice. I didn't there see any of those. Is mean, there, there is some? some I didn't see any of those. It. But uh, No, not options, but I mean built into it. Yeah, it actually felt more shaky on the PC build than it did on the Quest build. For some reason, it felt to me like the Quest had a little bit more gunsmoothing in there. Sure. But uh, yeah. yeah, and the other thing, grabbing objects, that's one thing I was definitely not <laughs> impressed about. Uh, but some things that were pretty cool, you know, the focus where you pull in the trigger and you kind of zoom in and focus a little bit, it kind of holds your breath. That was kind of cool. I kind of enjoyed yeah, that. It makes it for some more too. epic feeling shots, lining them up a little bit better. Uh, yeah, but I don't know. The other thing I did want to talk about a little bit, because this game kind of pushes the boundaries of gore a little bit in VR. And the fact right. that there's these x-ray kill cams that show the bullet hitting bone structures, hitting organs and kind of blowing them apart, like what they do in real life, uh, mm. you know, Violence in video games has been a topic for a long time. And I think it's one thing, flat gaming, you know, it's like, it doesn't feel real. But when you get into VR, things feel more real. And I actually know people that won't play a VR game that you're shooting human-like characters. They're okay with shooting aliens, stuff like that. But they have a real problem with shooting human-like characters. For me... Mm -hmm. I'm a guy, I like shooters. This stuff doesn't really bother me. I don't, right. I'm not like, oh, this is gross. You know what I mean? Like it's- We've played lots of yeah, stuff. Yeah, but I can understand some people that have that issue. And the other thing is, it's sure. kids. You know, I can see, you yeah. know, oh, not putting a yeah. young kid into this where you're seeing you blow somebody's brains out and it's a but human like- You can turn it off too to let you can. play, but you know. You can, but I mean, it's just, I think there's some psychological stuff uh, when it comes to VR and that kind of violence, because it's so much more real. And I was talking to my wife yeah. a little bit about this because I was just curious on other people's opinions, because for me, myself, you know, it doesn't really bother me much, but I know other people it does. And that's kind of where I wanted to bring in the topic. But uh, she was telling me that, you know, the part of the big problem with games like this is kids. And she said, you're the frontal lobe of your brain. And I'm going to sound really smart, but none of this is from me. But the frontal lobe of your frontal lobe of your brain is not fully developed until you're like age 25. And that is the part of your brain that helps you make rash decisions so to put kids and stuff into these that don't have a fully functioning brain yet you know what i mean like how does that scar them or affect them throughout their life and you know she makes a joke about how you know your brain doesn't fully develop till 25 and then you spend from 25 to 30 figuring out how to use a fully functioning brain which i think has some merit because after I turned 30, my decisions were much more clear and better decisions I made from being pre 30. You know what I mean? Yeah, sure, so sure. I don't know. I, I'm just curious. Some of the psychological and some of the people that, you know, won't play these kind of games. I know there's some in chat that won't play these kind of games. Right. So. Gaming science teacher. She doesn't like much to do with violence and stuff. I yeah, know that. For, I realistic mean, shooters and stuff. Yeah, and I think right. it's just, it, it's just a topic that I thought was kind of interesting to have. <laughs> VR spry guy said my frontal lobe still that. is not working correctly, but <laughs> But yeah, it is an interesting topic. And just the fact that VR is your, your, what your brain sees you holding a gun. It sees you pulling the trigger.
trigger and shooting somebody in VR. It right. is a little bit different than playing a flat game where you're holding a controller and seeing it happen on screen. So is, but the same time, who should be making these decisions? You know, I mean, a lot of it to me comes down to parents. Parents need to be making the decision of what well, their sure kids play and see at a young right. age. And that is the biggest lacking thing I think that we have. And that's, I the mean, biggest. we don't have, I mean, we've got rating systems, you know, involved with some things, you know, on, you know, console games and stuff like that. Right. Um, but yeah, I mean, there isn't really, you can't, you can't stop it all. I mean, what's a lot of it, you know, kids are going to say they're, you know, 18 years old and get past it or say their birth date, something, I mean, what really holds you to it at this, you know, yeah. point. So yeah, I mean, it's, oh, look at you pulling out your mag, too. Yeah, I know, trying to grab, grab the Grab it, yeah, pistol. trying to grab two-hand pistol. Like, I know, what, I can't I double hand? <sighs> so annoying. I know. Sorry. <laughs> I know, but, you know, Yeah, so, so Gaming yeah. Science, Science teacher said, there's a ton of stuff I don't have a problem with, but that parents should not be letting their kids play. Right. Parents know when their kids hit different maturity levels and need to monitor, and I totally mm -hmm. agree with that. The problem is, is that a lot of parents don't do that. You know, I mean, how many right. kids do we see in Quest that are, extremely i mean in population one that are extremely young saying all kinds of inappropriate things well, you know like th obviously there's no monitoring there of their no, parents right. or they just don't care you know what i mean the other like, bad thing on. is especially with vr you know say your kid's playing something on a, a screen a tv you see what they're playing in right. vr you don't know what they're doing in there you don't yeah um, and that's that's tough too because there is no way to really monitor that unless you want to you know cast your phone and stuff and try and right. monitor what they're playing but that's probably not happening all the time i mean if, no, if they are that's good on that. parents no. they, they need right. to do that yeah, i sure. think but right. yeah so yep. uh, yeah. arthur knox again said uh Another super chat. He said, I need them to take that mic usage in some games and put it in sniper elite. So when you hold your breath to steady your shoe, yeah, that, yeah. yeah like I know for sure. Yeah. Like yep. actually, cause your mic can pick up your breathing, you know, and if yep. it picks up no breathing, then it steadies. But as soon as you start to breathe again, it gives you a little bit, uh, you know, not as much smoothing. Yeah, there That'd was cool. a game that used that did that or no with the talking. That's what yeah, it was. There was like, yeah, that yep. was, there was a game that used that. Uh, yep. Tyreel said, make Arthur Knox a game designer, please, which I agree. I, know, right? I think he needs to be, I know. but, uh, yeah. And, uh, and said, and, uh, said torture and killing is definitely not something I like to do in my free time. So I mean, right. I don't normally either in my free time, but you know, <laughs> Tuesdays, I mean, oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Another no, thing that I, I think would have made this game phenomenally better is co-op. <sighs> we would have had co-op. I know yeah. I say that every time, but how much better would this game have been with co-op? You could have a spotter, you know, helping a sniper. Better? You could have support. Would it be better? Yes, know, it absolutely yeah, would. It. Yes, know, it absolutely would. Yeah. I mean, just like, you know, in pop one, when we get that random third, we just tell them to go run out there and, you know, no, get some don't. people to shoot at. Not you only so if they're super annoying, usually we try to help them, <laughs> but usually they either won't talk to us or they're just being crazy and giving up our position yeah. nonstop. But that's population one. It is what it is. <laughs> yeah. I know. yeah. Right. Paradise Decay said at Gaming Science Teacher, but I heard you like slaughtering defenseless blocks and Beat Saber. <laughs> right. Exactly. She is a Beat Saber player. Right. Yeah. <laughs> For sure. Slicing so. them in half and they just keep going. Nobody cares. <laughs> so yeah, let us know, you know, in the comments and stuff afterwards what you think of Sniper Elite. I know it's yes, very please in the comments because I do want to read those. Yeah, too. it's That's... very mixed. I know some people love it, some people love everything they've done, other people have nitpicks, some people don't like it. Some people don't like it at all. I've seen people in the Discord that say right. it's it's trash. They don't like it at all. You know, it's it's a straight up flat game that they implemented some VR into, which eh. yeah. I mean, I could see some of that, but yeah, I, I don't know. Let us, let us know what you think. Synchronized cause... sniper kills. Oh, that's what we do in pop one. Yeah. Yeah. That's yeah. That's great. what I'm saying. Yeah, Anything is better yeah. with co-op. Everything is better Wait, with co-op. I know it is. I agree. I agree. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, those totally. synchronized sniper shots in pop one. Oh, it's so good, man. Yeah. So good. <laughs> it but, is good. Yeah. So we'll see. Maybe they'll add multiplayer co-op. I doubt it, but I, I sure hope they, I sure hope they do. But, uh, <laughs> Real quick, before we get into the Quest competitor, the Quest 2 competitor stuff, I, I just wanted to mention Yuki uh, VR. This is on pre-order now on uh, Quest and I believe Steam as well. The cool thing about this is you pre-order, you save 10%, which makes the game $17.99, but you also yeah. get 48 hours of early access. So you get the game 48 hours before other people if you pre-order it. So that, thing, like that, that idea. is pretty cool. That idea is really yeah, cool, I think. I do. Yeah, I really do like that idea. Actually, that's kind of cool. Yep. I mean, it's it is a good reward. I mean, you're saving yeah. money, you're backing them, you're all of it. So yeah, I think that's cool. Yep. Like, and uh, this uh, uh, this release is on PSVR later in the year. I don't know when. Uh, the actual release date is July 22nd. Unless you pre-order, you get it July 20th. Uh, mm -hmm. but I mean, the game looks pretty cool. This is from the makers of the Pixel Rip series, and it you're essentially it's like an action character. You know, it's almost like you're playing with an action character as a kid, and you're holding it in your hand, and you're flying around to these different things because that's essentially 
essentially what this kind of is. You know, you're holding that character in your hand and that is how you control the movement through these, you know, levels and stuff like that. And as you level up, you get more powerful and stuff like that. It looks pretty cool. Yep. Uh, this is one of them games. I feel like you just got to play it to, to really, because seeing the trailer, it's like, all right, it looks kind of cool. But some games you just have to play in VR to feel like if totally they did, agree. did a good job with that connection and the feeling, you know, because uh Email. what was the what was the uh car racing game that had all the uh youtubers and stuff their cars in there uh oh I can't think um I can't yeah the think part um somebody will say it but essentially yeah. that's the same kind of thing you're racing those cars while it's connected to your hand so your hand yeah. is what actually makes and it's sounding hearing that does not sound fun to me at all but actually playing the game it actually Creates worked a whole new very well play style yeah, yeah it cool. does so it actually mm -hmm. worked well and i enjoy it so yep. i think this could be something that is similar to that kind of feeling and if it feels yep. right i think this is going to be pretty popular so yep so john westra said and this goes back to the gore and stuff like that and shooters he said how many people like me went into the military at 17 or 18 years old were deployed and now suffer from ptsd because yeah. of what they did train no kids to not destroy train kids to build not destroy or suffer the consequences which yeah i mean that's been I mean, a topic since, I mean, really goes back to the original, like, Grand Theft Auto and stuff with, you know, violence of shooting people then. And I'm talking, like, the top-down Grand Theft Auto, you know, yeah. the original stuff. Um, and does that violence embed in them and make them feel that way or feel that it's okay to do those kinds of things? You know what I mean? Know. I don't know. Um, that's psychology that's, that I don't fully understand, to be honest. I don't know. It, it is. It's tough. It's a fine line. And I think that is where you need parents to help with that and interject and make that known that that is a game. If you're going to yeah. allow that, you have to, you have to teach those things. Right. Um, I mean, other than that, yeah, it's fair game for their minds to the, wander and go different the basics places. too. You know, as a kid, you know, I, I shot guns and stuff as a kid, but I was taught exactly. discipline with, I mean, you never point a Correct. gun, whether it is loaded, whatever, Correct. you know, unloaded, whatever, you never point a gun at somebody, you know what I mean? Right. But if somebody plays a game like this in VR and they're pointing guns at all these people and then they go out in real life and there's a gun and they point it at somebody, even if they know it's unloaded, yep. they've never been taught that that's not okay. You know what I mean? I mean like, so a lot of it does come back on the parents. I think 100%. I mean, sure. you have to teach people safety they're, and discipline. You have to you mind know? the mold or yeah. mold the mind to, you know, the right way instead of letting them, I mean, they're children. I mean, children, inherently are going to do what they feel they want to do. So if you don't guide them, at right, least partially, exactly. it, yep. it can go bad. Absolutely. Yeah, so. for sure. So, and Z race was the car game that I was talking about. Gaming science teacher. Yeah, I fully mentioned Z race. That was the one I was talking about. Yep. That was in uh, a steam game. So, yep. yeah, but uh, I'm excited for Yuki. I need to pre-order it because I want to yeah. save 10%. Right, and exactly. I want to get a little bit early. I mean, why not? Right. You know what I mean? But uh, so we did want to get into, well, actually, let me give these other games away real quick from uh, sure. German Rifter before I forget. So this is Axe Throw VR, Steam Codes, uh, courtesy of German Rifter from the developer of RC, the RC race game we talked about last, RC Rush uh, and all of that. So just he's trying to support the developer. So awesome to be able to give these game codes away. Also check the description because we do have a giveaway going on for sniper elite so we talked about sniper elite we have yes. a code giveaway for that we also have a code giveaway for the memory, memory engine signed copy yep. so make sure you check out the description sign up for those uh as well so hopefully somebody grabs these codes real quick and i'll pop up the other codes uh, arthur knox said i wish they brought back spark from xbox to vr there there's so many games that i feel like they need to bring and like i mean obviously the ports a lot of times work very well you know doom and all right. that kind of stuff we've seen oh, so sure many games do. that work well transported Absolutely. into vr so if done right if, if done implemented right. with the right vr control and mm -hmm. stuff absolutely so uh but let me pop up these other ones hopefully somebody get these german rifter he is the man uh right. we want to talk a little bit about what we think is going to be a quest two competitor because we know, we've been man. talking about this headset for a long time. What the, I never resized it. <laughs> My bad. We've been talking about this, uh, headset though, for a long time and we yeah. followed all of their stuff, you know, for, they do live streams randomly. We followed so every single one. What this is, is this is the Lynx R1 and yep. this is a true mixed reality headset. This is going to do VR and AR and for a long time, this is very much focused at the enterprise level, you know, something like what right. HTC is doing and stuff like that. It's what their focus was. Well, recently mm -hmm. they have changed gears and they're changing their focus from an enterprise headset to a consumer headset. And yep. get this, they haven't given us a full price yet, but in the stream, they mentioned a few hundred dollars. How much is a few hundred dollars when you hear that word? 
I hope this is legit. I hope that that is going to be, I mean, could you imagine if they can match the price of a quest? Yeah. I mean, I mean a few hundred dollars a one three to bucks, one debate. Right? It's a one to one debate for me if they're at that price level, because this will run steam. They are yep. making their SDK compatible to Oculus ports to bring them over for devs who already have them on the Oculus store to implement this headset into it. Um, I mean, it, it should be able to run anything. Yeah. Um, and and, and also it, do AR. Yeah, and do AR. They're also deal. working with uh, Guy Godin as well to implement virtual desktop into yep. this so that you can wirelessly stream Steam VR games yep. and everything to this. It, this is running an XR2 chip platform. Uh, it, the Let me see here. I got the specs here. The resolution, uh, 1600 by 1600 LCD at 90 hertz. Uh, field of view, they're saying 90 degrees, 90. but they're saying it's mm -hmm. pretty much the same as the Quest 2, the field of view, sure. stuff like that. Uh, it's got uh, two black and white cameras for positional tracking. Mm -hmm. It's got two IR cameras for hand tracking, and it has two two visible light cameras, RGB cameras, uh, yep. so that you can do the pass AR pass-through stuff yep. and all of that. I mean, this headset, honestly, I've been very excited about for a long time, but the fact that they are making a consumer-grade model for what they say is a few hundred bucks, and later this year, they're going to do a Kickstarter. So the Kickstarter yep. is going to be, I believe, in September. Uh, so you're going to be able to, they're, they're not taking a bunch of outside uh, investments and stuff. They did have some investments early on. They also had a pre-order early on, uh, and they are refunding that pre-order that they did early on since they are shifting gears. They did take out the yeah. eye tracking. They're not going to be do, uh, doing eye tracking with this any longer. That's going to help save on some of the costs. There was some. I'm glad. I'm yeah. actually glad. I would rather see a more consumer based headset Me to too. get it out to the masses than have that because it's not being used right now, anyways. So I think yeah. that's a great thing. Yep. Um, I, I think this headset will be amazing. Um, I think the battery and stuff on the back and distributing the weight is what caught my eye when they yeah, started sure. developing this headset because that needed to be done. Yeah. Now we see things like the Quest with the battery now bank on the back and stuff for the yep. add-on Elite strap. So it's it, honestly, I think this headset will be the true yeah. Quest competitor. And, I and do. One of the you things won't that... have to have a Facebook login for right. it. So right. a lot, I, I will definitely 100 percent buy this headset, oh yeah especially at the price i mean I, i'm like, totally gonna back this on kickstarter their planned yep. uh full release is like february of 2022 but their kickstarter is supposed to happen september i saw somebody uh mention there's no way this is 90 degree fov i can't find it now but the thing is with this and one of the things that really caught my eye was the lenses so these lenses are completely right. different from anything you've ever seen mm -hmm. and this is one of the things yeah, that them, huh? yeah so these are a four-fold catadioptric freeform prism lenses. So I think this is part of the way they're getting some of the field of view without, and, and it looks different too, because right now it's just that front headset part. They have had models and renderings that show an actual headset that goes around. I don't know if they're going to do right. that. Tyler like talked interface. about maybe like binocular yeah. eye cup kind of things. Maybe they'll Correct. do, don't, we don't know what that is going to look like yet, but these lenses are something that is completely different from what you're seeing in your quest, your vibe, your right. index, all that stuff. These are pretty unique, I think. But if they can get those lenses, and I think it might be possible, protruded enough and get them close enough to your eye, you wouldn't even, for AR, it would be full screen, no obstruction, side to side, top to bottom. If they could get them close enough to your eye, yeah. I feel like it would make everything disappear. And just, here's an just early like that. on AR. Just like that model and this is early this is not one of their newest videos this is one of their older videos uh but just showing the ar capabilities of this thing i mean this is full yep. color you know rgb pass through I know, ar man. i mean this is what ar needs to be right now instead of just yep. the the glasses ar right now i think needs to be a mix of vr and ar and susan control i already saw the comment cracking right? up. Know, thank you for yeah. that super chat by the way right? one of our biggest Seriously. supporters she said i thought i opened an earlier show you look 10 years younger uh, <laughs> so right? i've gotten a non-stop this week uh everybody that has seen me without the beard says holy Holy crap, you look like you're 10 years younger than what you were. Yeah, weird, so, weird. yeah. Yeah, I, I think, and they, they said they are having, you know, they already have ready to go a Pokemon style, style yeah. AR game um, yep. that is playable right now. And I, I think this stuff is amazing. And I've said forever, the best AR is VR. Right. Because you get that full pass through. You can't overlay you get a something wider FOV. in front of me. Exactly. Yeah. On any type of AR glasses you yep. can give me that people are making, at least at the moment. Yep. Uh, and especially at this price point, it right. can do both. Yeah. Why would you buy something that's just a pair of glasses? And okay, maybe for looks, I understand that. Right. For visual, for walking around town and stuff right. like that, yes, I would have a pair of glasses. 
But to fully immerse yourself in something, this is incredible. It yeah, really absolutely. is. Absolutely. I mean, I'm, I'm super, super excited, excited about this. I will be backing yep. this 100% on Kickstarter. So John yep. Westra, yep. thank you for that super chat. He yes. said, Cheers, consumer man. grade VR with RGB AR pass through. Uh, less than $500 is a new no brainer buy for me and my business yep. clients. I'm bullish. Yep. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, absolutely, how do you pass man. this up yes. for that price range? Yes. I mean, this originally their target price is around $1,500 yep. and they've gotten it Even now. That, to, that's still a debate that would still at $1,200. I'd probably still buy it because I feel like this is the emerging headset. This is yeah. the technology that we need right now in the VR AR. Yep really yep. is. I agree. Uh, and they also have a transparent model. Uh, you can see in some of these picks, mm -hmm. they have a transparent model that is cool. coming, uh, to the Kickstarter, which is pretty cool. Uh, yep. I, I, it looks kind of neat. I don't know. I don't know which one I buy. That's a, like a limited edition run. And I think it's going to be a little bit more expensive for that clear the, the housing. The only one, things that still worry me are some of like their tracking volumetrics because of their camera placement. Yeah. Um, but I have said this a long time. I own a ton of 360 cameras, right? Those lenses, because they protrude so much, capture 180 degrees plus, 190 right. degrees. So you could do really cool stuff with that type of lens. I don't know if that's what they're using. I hope it is something a yeah, little more, know. you know, capturing, but yep. we'll see. As long as their tracking's good. I think it could be incredible. Yeah, that's going to be really the biggest really thing for sure yep. is, is see the tracking and, and, you know, how this with these new lenses and stuff. I mean, I can't wait to try this yep. myself. I know they are going to be having some YouTuber people go out to right. where, I, forget, I can't remember if they're France. I can't remember where they're at now, but they, it, there are going to be yeah. some people trying this here pretty soon. I want to try it myself. I don't know when I'll get the, I know, uh, man. I know. the, the chance to do I that. But this I, in my life. Yeah, I'm definitely going to be backing this. I mean, this is what somebody needed to do to be a quest competitor is come down yep. in price somehow, you know, and they're, and they're going to be able to do it. So yes. yep. that is very exciting. And, and they're staying privately, not a hundred percent, but you know, basically going a forward. Private company yeah. That's why they're no doing the Kickstarter. Yep, yep. That's why they're awesome doing the Kickstarter. Thing. So they can stay, you know, private, not have a ton of outside influence to, to, you know, determine their decisions and stuff like right. that. So, uh, they're saying yeah. on the power, they're saying the battery life is three hours of active yep. use and it does have active cooling, which you can kind of see from the, the transparent model. Yeah. But yeah, this and is... I, I like, I like their little, um, you know, earbuds that are built into the strap and getting them yeah, close, you know, closer to your ears and stuff. Yeah. I think that's awesome. Uh, as long as it sounds good and their tracking is good. I think this is a win all yeah. day. I, I really mean, the think. one thing that we have to think about though, is that, you know, their planned release is February of 2022. Right. We're probably going to see a quest to pro that's model or whatever it is. Yeah. They're going to announce something later this year and we're going to see something that's probably going to be similar to this from Facebook as well. We're going to see something that is going to implement AR as well, you know, with full color RGB cameras. I think we are going right. to see that, but at least there's another option now. And there is hopefully some true competition coming. I mean, I'm extremely excited about this headset. We've been excited about it for a long time. And the fact that they've gotten the price down to where they're talking about with that good of looking AR and the, the possibilities yep. of what this thing's going to be able to do. I'm a hundred percent. And they board. changed the back on it now. So it's a little more ergonomic looking and stuff instead yeah. of just a and I don't kind know, of hanging back there. And I don't know if this still, if this is the final design, you know, because I don't know if they're going right, to go to some right, of their right. earlier models where they sure. have the blinders that kind of come around like a regular VR headset. I don't know. Right. I don't know for sure. But uh, yeah. Big Show, thank you for that super chat. He said, head of AR for Google just left for Facebook Reality Labs. Really? I did not see that. Oh, man. Wait, wait, who? I don't know what. Head of that? AR for Google just left for Facebook oh. Reality Labs. Well, I mean, that's kind of a smart move. I mean, Google's really not doing a whole lot they? with it. I mean, it, you don't know yeah. that. They're just holding back. I mean, all these Apple, Google, I guarantee they're all working Look, on this AR stuff. They're just, you Go know. Google, Google's a software company. I mean, they're they're not really a hardware company. They want Facebook to is be. an advertising company. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, I understand that, but Google has tried yeah. and they didn't really succeed and... I don't think they really stand yeah. a chance. To and that's the other play. thing I'm not sure about. I just saw Regner mention the tracking and controllers. I haven't seen a controller model either. Right. Do you? Right. I don't no, know I what that's going to be. I mean, I know it has hand tracking, but I haven't seen a controller right. model. That's, that is another big question mark right. for sure. But if it works with steam, it'll probably, they'll probably just make it compatible with, you know, any controller I would assume. But if they don't, you know, come out with their own by that point. Yeah. Um, hopefully they will. Yeah. I mean, hopefully, hopefully it's got yeah. some, some good, uh, controllers i don't know <laughs> we'll see I but i mean this is uh, extremely extremely exciting to me yep. so we'll have to see i know i want it I want here's it another picture hands. of the i just oh, here's a little AR video of the optical right. thing this oh, yeah, is like right. showing through the lens and then backing it up through the that yeah. fourfold dioptric whatever you call it lens which is 
so cool. I know. Yeah. See how big it gets? How close that is? That's I want to so see through amazing. that lens. So I know. Bad. I really oh, do. dude. Like, oh. and all this is early so still good. too. This this footage was real early, but. And I mean, we'll have to have obvious, you know, a PD adjustment inside of that, um, physical PD yeah. adjustment because that won't be done lens sided. Um, and I think it looks to me like they have that right on the. Yeah, no, they gotta have some kind of IPD adjustment, yeah. I would imagine. Uh, would Susan Cottrell, again, with another one, said the thing oh, is, what type of games will be available with Facebook buying up all the games? That is something to consider. You know, Facebook is buying up all these development teams. Uh, I mean, sure. I know they're gonna make it easy to implement, you know, Oculus SDK builds into the Lynx ecosystem, right. but I don't know so what it it'll mean for things right. like Population One. You know, where well, Facebook yeah, bought one. out Big Box. That that is an issue with with Facebook doing that. I'm sure but, that's the reason they're doing it too. They want to secure that position. On Steam. That, like, stuff true, like that's true. available on Steam, so you can play that through Steam and you're good. But true, yeah, true. future wise, new games coming out, yeah, you are going to see stuff limited when it's owned by Facebook. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's so, a, it's PD a world, but. mentioning uh, the Moss 2 announcement, which is awesome. Moss 2 got announced yeah. for PSVR. I don't know, I don't know if Great. it's been announced. Is that a PSVR like limited time exclusive? Because uh, obviously, Moss, you know, is on Steam and Quest and all of that. So, is, is Moss 2 going to be coming to that as well? I don't know. That'll be interesting to see. But Moss is an awesome game. I actually haven't yeah. finished that i need to hop back in i think that's i have that on my wife's headset and that's where i've played I'm, uh, i have it on my headset too i just it's not i have to re-download it because sometimes i still delete things to uh make room but awesome awesome game and everybody keeps telling Man. me i got to get back in there and complete it so i need to do that mark mark's up at 2 a.m right now in uh australia Woo. aussie hey. weapons Awesome. Cheers. Drink that coffee. Yep. <laughs> Might stay up all night. Yeah, maybe not. maybe not. But uh, he also said Netflix are starting to look into invest in VR. And we saw that they, yeah. they partnered with the team that did, uh, what was that? I can't think of, what was the show? I can't think of the name now. Oh, um, uh, uh, Bridgeport. Bridge, yeah bridgerton uh Bridge, bridgerton Bridgen, Bridgen, yeah bridgerton. anybody seen that show uh, it's not a show i've seen anybody bridgerton. that's like bridgerton. one of, it's like one of the most popular shows on netflix i guess but i right. i've not it's not one that i've seen mm -hmm, uh, me neither. yeah but arthur knox again said cheers man do they have Good developer friend. kits out for this new headset i'm not sure i'm guessing they probably do i'm sure they've been working with some developers probably i know ready, yeah, yeah sure. i know they've talked to gee godin uh, from virtual desktop for a while i know they're in works with him so yeah. I, I they say they have a lot more news to announce here coming up so we will definitely try to keep everybody companies. updated as much yep. as we can and uh hopefully be able to talk to them specifically on a show maybe right. uh yeah awesome awesome okay. team very excited for that so I, I do look forward to the news that's coming i just up. love the transparency in that company man yeah i really that do and i feel like we need more companies like that yeah <sighs> So, so the Netflix news is basically that they've partnered uh, with Shonda Rhimes, a powerhouse television yep. producer who Bridgerton exploded on Netflix, became the company says is its most watched series ever. So they have a deal with them and we don't know what this is yet. And me and Tyler were kind of talk about it and what we think it is going to be is the whole Westworld kind of a thing, right? Correct. Yeah. yeah. I, I feel like it's going to be a game experience kind of deal um, like, uh, Westworld or what was the other one I said? Oh, like walking dead, because yeah. that is a series as well. Yep. Um, who knows how extreme it will be, uh, whether it'll be a game experience, anything, uh, maybe just a place you go in and watch it. And maybe you're in the world that, you know, you actually would see on the show. Who knows? But I think it'd be uh, cool to do great. the Westworld kind awesome. of experience. Like oh, I, I, I don't know much about this Bridgerton show, uh, so I don't know how well it would transfer into VR. But I feel like anything can come into VR. And like Wolf Raza said, so three, yeah. so 360 shows. I mean, it could be. I don't know. That's like, cool too. The iRobot stuff was amazing. Yeah, so um, to watch. it could be something like that. But from what it sounded like, it almost sounded like it was going to be some kind of a game just from this story on uh, CNET. Uh, but no, there's nothing clear yet. You know, there's nothing for sure. You yeah. know, and, I mean, the biggest thing about the story was that, you know, that Netflix is really showing their interest in VR. You know, they've showed some yeah, interest in the sure. past. You know, there's a Netflix app and stuff like that uh, on headsets that you can watch stuff in VR. But this is really, you know, the next step, I think, in their sure. dedication to potential VR. Yeah, media consumption. I mean, yeah. they want to be on the ahead of it. They want to beat anybody else trying to do it. Uh, which is probably smart. I mean, mm -hmm. I mean, think how long, how far back Netflix goes. They go to like, you know, delivery in the mail and stuff. Yeah, I still true. probably I have leftover that, Netflix ones that are in sleeves that I got in the mail that I never sent back. And, I, you know, I got charged for it. But um, then and they went to streaming, you know, early on. Uh, and it was hard even at that time to get stuff to stream because Internet access wasn't as fast as it needed to be and low resolution. And then that yeah. got better. And now look at it. It's like so uh, GC 13, the Diet Pepsi Cat said, I would say Bridgerton is to VR gaming what 
bandersnatches to video gaming, more of a narrative experience than a game. Right. Uh, but that I mean, that, I feel like that's a huge industry still that VR is, is still pretty young. And you know, the whole narrative experience, kind you, of a storytelling of VR. When I played Westworld, the game, it gave me goosebumps to then watch the show. I've never had that experience with a video game at all. I mean, or comparing, you can't even, I can't even compare anything to that. Cause how have you ever been able to like, okay, I guess live in a world would be, um, okay. Back to the future going to like, what was that? A Disney or uni- universal who had that. There was a back to the future experience, you know, where you got in the car, you, the actual car, the DeLorean, you know, with people and rode it and you were flying around and stuff at the amusement park. That is the only time I ever felt drawn in or like I had a real life experience in something yeah, until sure. VR came out and something like that. So I think stuff, very we powerful. Really need more of it. Okay, I mean, we really it is, do. It is I mean, very could powerful. you imagine an episode like continue the episode in, you know, in the episode in VR, yeah. like put your headset on and get to see like in it? Like that's just yeah. so cool, man. I would yeah. love that. I, I am really curious to see what happens with the future of movie storytelling kind of stuff in VR because it's just, you know, especially even like the, the 180 3D VR stuff, you know, I feel like that has a ton right. of potential as that technology grows and, and gets better. It's just, yeah. I mean, you literally Arthur, can feel inside those worlds. That's what's cool. Arthur Knox said, can we get video sync for Ready Player One? Wouldn't it be amazing to like have a movie on and have it like timed up and synced where you could like slip the headset on and then be in it, like in that scene and stuff to like, I mean, crap like that yeah. like, oh, you could i mean I, I, that just it. that just reminded me Endless of a thing. episode of family matters <laughs> if anybody i'm very much that old school that, that's my genre of tv shows like i still love you know the saved by the bell full house family matters step by step all that stuff i love it but they did a episode of family matters a long time ago where it was the three remember the 3d glasses where you have like the red and the yeah. blue so they yeah. did an episode of that a long time ago when i was a kid and where you would put on those 3d glasses and there was parts of the show that would pop out of your tv you know what i mean and that, yeah. that stuff's just super cool you can do that now with what you're saying watching something and a certain part says slip the headset on and it's like boom something crazy happens you know what i mean like ah, there's just so much potential just so much yeah potential. I, know. I know so he said imagine uh seeing the sets uh traveling man said imagine seeing the sets as the movie or show plays out like, there is some stuff you there- honestly the early iRobot stuff was so cool because their camera placement was incredible and i love the art style of that show too but like you would be floating like in the ceiling looking down on the scene. And it was so cool to see these like different perspectives and stuff. It yeah. Was awesome. there, there are some video out there that shows behind the scenes of different shows and movies where yeah. you're actually watching the filming process and stuff, which is pretty yeah. cool. I can't oh, yeah. think of one right off the top of my head, but I have been in a couple different ones and people are still popping in here and <laughs> saying, where's the beard? What the heck? What Akuma beard, games yeah. said, where's the beard? I just hopped in. <laughs> right. Oh my God. Oh, so funny. Oh, it's going to take some while to get, it's going to take a while to get used. I'm not even used to it yet. So, uh, Ken Ross said AMC is starting to launch VR experience centers, although pour one out for the death of the void. Yeah. The so, void, yeah. I know. Yeah, yeah. So, I mean, there, I feel like there's, VR is finally starting to get some kind of recognition in the mainstream world. I feel like, oh, I mean, I'm is, seeing commercials 100%. all the time with VR headset. I've seen multiple commercials of the quest Two headset, you know, I told you, uh, Dave, I don't, I don't think you've ever seen that show. Uh, great show by oh, the yeah, way. Yeah, yeah. uh, on FX. It, uh, it. they, they featured it in their trailer for this season. Uh, they had a quest Two in it and stuff. And I'm like, Oh man, it's happening. I mean, yeah. it's ma- we're mainstream. I mean, come on. Yeah. And it's there's crazy. more and more people trying to get involved, which is, it's awesome stuff. So, yeah. Yep. Yep. I know. Yeah. I don't know. I, I can't wait. I can't wait to see what this Netflix stuff comes about. I can't wait for this. Links are one set. Oh, huh? it's so good. I want it. I want oh, the links. I, know. I want it for so sure. Bad. So I good. think that's it. Oh, most of the oh, you best know AR I think I've ever seen. You know what I'm really excited about? What? UFC no. 264. Oh, I know. <laughs> well, so I know. I, McGregor. I, McGregor, I have this yeah, problem yeah, because yeah. I want to watch it so bad, but it's $70 for the pay-per-view. And I'm like, oh, and I'm old and I can't stay awake that long. It's so hard. I used to watch UFC all the time and yep. stay up, you know, every Saturday when they had a UFC fight, we would go somewhere and stay up till, I mean, sometimes fights yeah, yeah, weren't yeah. over to like one or two in the morning, my time East coast, but yeah. it, that is hard to do. I'm curious. Is anybody streaming it in big screen that wants to, you know, save a spot for in. me to hop in because I, I know. 
that that's what I'm interested in. So somebody, Dude, or maybe we could even get a pool going on. Like if I don't know how many people can you get into big screen now? I don't even know, uh, but we could all chip it. in some money, you know, and somebody, somebody buy the, uh, illegal stream. Yeah. Illegal yeah, exactly. stream. Is it illegal? I guess it is. Maybe is yeah, it illegal, it is illegal to, to rebroadcast. Yeah. It yeah. Is. But sure. in big screen, I guess. Yeah. I don't sure know. it is. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> you can't crap. share it. Oh, right. Crap. Can we edit that part out? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Dana exactly. White's coming for me. <laughs> right. Sure. Yeah. Reckoner said UFC is too expensive. there. Did Matt Sarah go out for that fight? Uh, I don't know. I'm not sure. He probably awesome. is. Yeah, he probably yeah. is. I don't know. But uh, Man, I mean, this is going to be the biggest fight Did you see fight the ever. way into? I mean, oh, yeah. Connor was like all jacked. Like he always like, is. I mean, I, I guess know, their second fight. If you he tries if you, to get that like intimidation and oh, stuff. Oh yeah, he, he's a he's he's a smart guy. I mean, one of the highest paid UFC athletes ever. I mean, right? he's he's smart in his tactics and what he does. He but uh, he's a good dresser. Yeah, <laughs> but uh, if you go back, if you go on YouTube to the UFC uh, channel, you can watch their first two fights. You can watch the first fight and oh, the second cool. fight for free, the full fight. Uh, I actually just rewatched them yesterday. I've watched them a couple times now, and they are one and one. So they've yeah. each won one bout between the two. This is going to be the tiebreaker, number three. I'm very curious to see what happens uh, tonight. Pimmy said, who you got tonight? And I was like, man, oh, I, I don't know. I kind of want Poirier to win again. I kind of want him to win again, but uh, I yeah, I don't know. I mean, I don't know if he I don't, I don't know, know if he will. I mean, Conor McGregor is a beast, either, but they're both I beasts. I mean, they just, both just you, knock people out. So, did you see how jacked he is right now, yeah. Conor? Man, he is like on point right now. I don't know. It's crazy. I don't know. I'm curious if he's lost some of his focus though okay. after yeah. doing all the boxing stuff and everything else that he's been involved in. I, I don't know. It'll be interesting Crack to see. Uh, calm. <laughs> Arthur Knox at VR <laughs> Challenge when Jason VR happened to be happened to be the camper talking like jason like the horror movie jason oh all right. <laughs> i don't know oh my gosh yeah i don't know what he means but uh, <laughs> thanks again for another super right? chat but oh, uh yeah so so reckoner said i'd be up for a big screen ufc uh consortium so hopefully if i can stay awake let me know on the discord join our discord uh maybe we can set something up in there right? i don't know but i really okay. want to watch it i might just end up buying the pay-per-view i don't know because bad yeah. thing is like I hate to wait till the next day and then watch like the highlights and stuff. It's like, it doesn't have the same like emotional, uh, just feeling and, and excitement. Oh, I know. Yeah. You we know? used to like, go to oh. places to watch it with like groups of people yeah, and stuff. It's it just was so like, awesome. Oh man. Oh, I know. So awesome. Yep. So yeah, big show cool. said all that stuff y'all are talking about is possible, but new era of VR is only five years old. More people getting involved. Companies will make it happen. I mean, it is true. I mean, in the bigger scheme of thing, VR isn't really that old. This, iteration of it at least could you imagine though like this fight with like a stereoscopic 360 camera right on the edge of the ring yeah. to literally like feel like you're standing there watching it outside the cage like awesome. that would be insane and they have done some sports that stuff like that most not, of it's 360 yeah. though i want right. to see the no, depth no, no, no. Stereoscopic. And stuff yeah i want to yeah, see the yeah, stereoscopic yeah. stuff and i think that as that that technology grows that's going to be massive because i mean right. that that to me sounds more worth 70 dollars to pay to get oh, if i could day. watch the whole thing yeah. ringside with very very high quality 3d yep. 180 you know extremely yep. high bit rate like that sounds more worth 70 dollars yep. to me i mean can we, can we work expensive. with like matt uh, like matt sarah could push that right i mean he he knows the right people to talk to about that yeah. he knows what VR i mean dana all, white has tried the is, quest man. too he has played throughout right? the fight and he true. said it is very true incredibly Yep. draining and you know the physical ability yeah. that you have to have to play a full round of some hardcore thrill of the fight i mean it is exhausting i mean he yep. he sees that he knows the potential of vr yeah so, I know, man Ugh. yeah i know so yeah. i don't know i i know yep. everybody here probably isn't super ufc fans but right. we we do love it i don't watch it as much as i used to i used to be hardcore uh, UFC yeah, yeah. fluke Rogi said, given how late I've stayed up playing Demio with Sean, he gets no sympathy for me. If he can't stay awake to watch the TV, <laughs> that's so true. Uh, yeah, he yeah. has played Demio till like five, six in the morning, his, his time. time or pop right. one. I think we played pop one back in the day, pretty late too, but yeah, I'm, I'm a wuss, man. I'm like an early to bed, early to rise kind of person usually. So I'm not. <laughs> John Johan Liebert says I got Dustin. So it seems yeah. pretty mixed. I've seen some people pulling know, for, uh, for Conor McGregor and as well as Dustin. Poirier, I, think it's so. great. I think it's a great fight no matter which way it goes. Honestly, yeah, it's going to be, be great. To see. And there's some other good fights too, uh, in, in the card, you know, some earlier sure. fights too are really good. So, uh, yeah, I can't, I, I gotta find it. I gotta, I gotta watch it. I don't know. I know. I know. All right. Yeah. Yep. Yep. Awesome. So I think that's pretty much it. We got off on a tangent about UFC, saying. but yeah, I'm excited to watch it. So hit yeah. me up in the discord. If somebody's streaming it on big screen, I might hop in there just don't tell Dana. Right. 
Just buy it. Just do it. I might. <laughs> I yeah. might. I don't know. The wife All doesn't right. get into it as much as I do, though. Even though I sh I watched the other two fights with her yesterday and like some of the uh, press conference stuff and like all the stuff oh, leading up yeah, to it. Cool. So hopefully she'd be like, "Oh man, I can't wait to see this too." You know, we got to get this, yeah. but I, I don't know if it worked. <laughs> we'll see. We'll see. We'll see. We'll see. But yep. anyways, <laughs> anyways, thanks again, everybody. Yep. Thank you so much for the super chats and everything. Uh, we just we love hanging out with everybody Saturday morning. It's been awesome. Yep. Thanks to exactly. Reckoner. Uh, and fluke for making it happen, sending over these signed copies of the memory engine. Uh, we're going to be giving some of those away, uh, links in the description oh. for those join the discord. That way we can continue the conversation. Some in there that we, we love to have. So I know. we need more help in pop one too. We were losing the other night. Yeah. I didn't like, no, we were doing terrible. I don't know what happened. It's bad. It's bad. It's bad. I know. <laughs> yeah. uh, when you got no comms, right. that makes it hard, but anyways, yep. Let us know what you think of uh, Sniper Elite. Is it the best game ever or does it lack in some areas? Let us know. I'm curious. But yeah, thanks again, everybody. Yeah, thanks. thanks again to uh, German Rifter for, for yes. giving away some codes in the Everyone show. Everyone who super chatted, all the Patreons. Yep. Um, you guys are amazing. It. Everybody in Discord. Great to see Sorry you. About Good that. to see you guys back here. Uh, it's Sorry gone. about the no beard. It's buried in the that backyard, man. Buried in the back. Right. Arthur Knox said, "Just off my head, UFC VR. Can we please?" <laughs> yeah, right. right? Uh, that'd be awesome. That would that'd be, be awesome. amazing. I know. Yep. Yep. Seriously. Seriously. All right, Thank we're you. gonna get out of here. Yep. We'll see you guys back here next week, or see you in VR. Or Later, big guys. screen UFC. See ya. Oh, here we go. Here we go. <laughs> Into VR in 2016. That was when we first uh, we got the rift. Yeah. Oh, that's Howdy, howdy. Hey, it worked. It there worked. It is. How about Perfect. That? Hey. Um, we're lucky to be here. I will admit that. My name's Tyler. This is Sean. We're Rendered Reality. And we were definitely up late playing some VR last night. Yeah. That's what I was thinking. It's not always better. <laughs> that's, uh, that's, keep it PG, boys. I mean, right? We don't know uh, like how much right, sound I is coming agree. out of it. It's true. Right, right. Is there more sound coming out of it? Uh, we don't know. Yeah.